Hey everybody, welcome to the Jimmy Dore Show. I'm here at the Ron Placone. Howdy, howdy. So, when someone tells you that you're responsible for Donald Trump, uh, keep two things in mind. That person's an asshole, and uh, B, you're not responsible. C, it's Susan Sarandon's fault. Duh. Everyone knows it's Susan Sarandon's fault. <laughs> or someone else with no money and no power. The, the people to blame for, uh, so that's called voter shaming. You get to vote for who you want to. And if a and, and if a politician doesn't appeal to you enough to to get your vote, they lost you. They don't get it. They don't have a right to your vote. You get to vote for who you want to. In fact, that's the only way you can make change. Until and, and people say, "Well, you can't vote for a third party until a lot of people are already voting for a third party." <laughs> it's kind of it's kind of a catch-22, isn't it? So uh, I was a third-party voter in the 2016 election, very proud of it. And if other people would have followed my lead, we could have changed the country, but a lot of people voted out of fear, exactly what Hillary Clinton and the establishment wanted you to do. And so we still got Trump, yet we have no third party in America. Isn't that fantastic, you fucking idiots? Uh, so the next, So now to stop that kind of finger-wagging, at voters, which is that's all it is, is voter shaming. Again, that's just the, that's the lowest thing you can do in electoral politics. Besides suppressing the vote is to shame people for not voting for a horrible, horrible candidate. That's just disgusting. And uh, so the thing that can solve this little bit, little bit of a solution to this is ranked choice voting. Tell people what it is, Ron, ranked choice voting. So ranked choice voting is basically where you get to vote for more than one candidate and it just like deflects. So using 2016 as an example, you know, let's say you're, you're really worried about Donald Trump, but uh, you don't really like either candidate. And uh, the policy you agree most with is the Green Party. You can go ahead and vote for Jill Stein, and then if you want to vote for Clinton next, you can. You could have voted for Clinton next, and Gary Johnson third, and Trump fourth, and then you know, depending on the state results, your vote would automatically deflect to that second choice, uh, and that's how ranked choice voting works. If if Jill Stein were not to be the winner of that state, and you have to get a certain percentage, right? So, so let's say you voted for, let's just say for instance, you, there were three people in the race. Mm -hmm. uh, Jill Stein, Hillary Clinton, and Donald Trump. So mm -hmm. you went in and you voted number one for Jill Stein, mm -hmm. number two for Hillary Clinton. Mm -hmm. Now let's say Hillary Clinton gets way more votes than Jill Stein. Mm -hmm. Then your vote would go to Hillary, right? Yes. That's how that would work. Mm -hmm. But if if more people, so the, so you could you didn't have to worry about voting out of fear. You didn't have to go. I only have this one vote, and I can't. Right? That we're describing it you correctly. You don't have to right? vote out of fear. Yeah. So you don't have to vote. So you so so uh, everybody who believed in Jill Stein's Green New Deal could still vote for it. They could uh, they could show their approval for it, yet still not feel like they were somehow helping Donald Trump. Mm -hmm. And if she got a certain threshold, guess what? She would have won. And if she gets a third, right? So. They don't want that to happen. The establishment does not want that. They don't want you to have that ability. They want to be able to scare you into voting for a corporatist neoliberal like Hillary Clinton, which is what's called the Pied Piper strategy. Well, I'm sure you've heard that. That was Hillary Clinton's actual strategy was to elevate Donald Trump in the press so that he would be the opponent, so that they could run against him. So that people would have no choice but to vote for her. She's so flawed and horrible. So they had to have someone even more horrible to run against. This is a horrible way to run a goddamn election and a country. I'm just, so now a ranked choice voting gets around that bullshit and they don't want you to get around it, right? Yeah. Next time Democrats and Republicans try to have a literal unpopularity contest, it's really going to backfire if you have something like ranked choice if voting. If you have something like ranked so they. So they got it. They voted it in on a ballot initiative in Maine. Mm -hmm. And but now ranked choice voters submit signatures for. So but it, it was stopped. The ranked choice voting. They uh, well, let's let's go through this article. Supporters of ranked choice voting submitted more than 80,000 signatures on Friday to send the issue back to the main ballot in June after lawmakers voted to delay and potentially repeal the law. I want to add something real quick here, yeah. Jimmy. They went door to door and they were out on the streets collecting those votes. And Maine is cold AF oh, getting right those now, signatures, dude. right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. And Maine is really cold. So they really want this and they've earned it. 
Yes, the people have spoken. And in November 2016, voters approved a ballot initiative that would make Maine the first state in the nation to implement ranked choice voting. So they voted on and passed it. But lawmakers passed a law delaying the effective date until December 2021 and then repealing the ranked choice voting process altogether if a constitutional amendment hasn't been passed by then to address legal concerns. And what are uh, what are the legal concerns? In May, the Maine Supreme Judicial Court issued a unanimous advisory opinion suggesting parts of the ranked choice law applying to races for governor and legislature were unconstitutional because the Maine Constitution calls for candidates to be elected by a plurality. So that's what they're saying, that this new ballot initiative giving them ranked choice voting doesn't match up with their Constitution. That's mm -hmm. what they're saying. Yes. yes. Okay. A proposed con And that's why they could pass that law delaying it yes, and get away with it. that's why they wanted to delay it, yeah. Okay. A proposed constitutional amendment failed to pass the legislature, resulting in a deeply divided but successful vote to delay the law and then potentially repeal it. So they couldn't come up with a fix for the to reconcile the ballot initiative law with the constitution of the state. So it looks like it's on its last leg might get screwed over the mm -hmm. ranked choice voting, which is what the establishment wants. This yeah, it's a, they couldn't pass an amendment towards a document that's designed to be amendable. Yes. Just let that sink in. Yeah. <laughs> this sets up an unprecedented and potentially confusing scenario in June, this June, when voters will decide whether to restore ranked choice voting in Maine, even as they use the ranked choice system in the primary races for governor, legislature, and Congress. So they're going to be using it, and then they're going to have to go to the ballot box again in June to frickin' Decide whether they could use it. Be like, so what the fuck did we just do? Was that a free yeah. sample? What was what's going on? Right? <laughs> yeah. It is very confusing. It is very confusing, <laughs> but I hope we explained it a little less confusing. Well, and to sum it up in two sentences, here's a prime example, or I guess one sentence, here's a prime example of government working against the will of the people. Yep. Hey, we really want this. It passed. Oh, wait a second. We got some red tape here, and oops, sorry. Well, we really want this again. Here's a bunch of signatures. Yeah. How about an amendment? Well, it, well, well, well maybe d d decide again in June. Yeah. There's some red tape. Uh, who can fix up that red tape? Oh, us. Are you going to? No. <laughs> Exactly. That's what they're yes. saying. The legislature says, "Oh, the we can." There's red tape, but the oh, how do you fix it? We have to pass a law to fix it. Are you going to do that? No. <laughs> so uh, there you go. Rank choice voting is a big. We should. We should. I should. We should get a super pack just to start rank choice voting. Oh yeah, and 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 there's yeah. I mean, even like rank choice voting is the alternative voting method that's gotten like the most clout. How do we get and that on the ballot in California? Ballot initiative. You got it. We should get it. We should figure. Look into that. Should yeah. get a, we should get some billionaire to fund us. <laughs> there, there's some people for like alternative voting methods that have like some pretty deep pockets. So yeah, yeah, I mean, we that's... should, we should. I bet you we could get um, some rank choice voting on the uh, California ballot. We should do something. I feel like we got to do something. Well, we're gonna we're working on the municipal broadband in we Pasadena. Are. Yep. Uh, uh, I'm a donator to Wolfpack. I'm trying to get money out of politics. Yep. <laughs> uh, but I want to do something more, even more concretey. And uh, we'll look into this, how to get a... I know you got to get a ton of signatures to get something on the ballot, and it costs money. Mm. So, but I'm sure we if could If only get, we had a platform where we could reach a bunch of people all at once. <laughs> <laughs> that isn't being throttled by the... <laughs> we're being Touché. You think this video's not going to be friggin' throttled? They're throttling everything. So make sure you're subscribed. That's how they screw over independent news. You heard me say it. Make sure you're subscribed. Check the bell. February 24th, San Diego live show. March 25th, Austin, Texas live show. February 16th, already sold out, baby. So thanks for doing that. Become a patron. Buy a Neoliberalism Sucks t-shirt or a nice mug. Right there at our thing. And uh, thanks for your support.